I feel really fortunate to be here today because, uh, like Dan, I was here in 2008, and in 2008 I had the, the honor to do the, the kickoff keynote uh, when I was serving as the director of the National Cybersecurity Center, and the key message that I delivered at that time was the importance of enhancing the Internet protocols for greater security, that the best thing we could do to secure the Internet was to invest in the fundamental protocols and developing the standards and deploying them, and that without doing that, we could spend many billions, hundreds of billions, or even trillions of dollars on security with a limited impact. And to be here today, to have the honor to, to serve ICANN and to serve the community, and to see DNSSEC that so many of you have been working on for up to 20 years rolling out, uh, makes me feel truly, truly fortunate. And when we look in that, uh, at, at what's been accomplished, the first thing I want to do is just recognize the work of the Internet Engineering Task Force, and the IETF has worked on this problem for a long, long time. Many engineers have, have worked to develop the, the, the standards, develop test beds, uh, work through the RFCs. It's been an enormous mountain of work that uh, the rest of us can, can benefit from. I'd like to begin by uh, actually joining Rod in his congratulations of the, uh, the IETF. Uh, there are a tremendous number of engineers who have literally put uh, uh, maybe up to even decades of their life into the project of DNSSEC. Uh, I was not one of them. Uh, I was, in fact, like many engineers who thought DNSSEC was uh, uh, too much work for not enough benefit. You know what? I was wrong. Uh, and that's okay. Um, being wrong just means the world's more interesting than the world than, than you thought it was. Um, DNSSEC turns out to be one of the most interesting technologies that I have ever seen in my career. Not simply for its ability to fix problems in DNS itself, although it does a pretty comprehensive job of that, but in actually providing a infrastructure, a, a operating environment in which some of the single most pernicious problems in all of security cannot merely be addressed, but addressed efficiently, effectively, affordably. These are words we don't generally consider in security. We usually just think, oh, well, we're just going to demand it, we'll mandate it, we'll require it. No, it doesn't work like that. It's got to be good. It's got to be operational. It's got to work in the field. I've had the opportunity to see over the last 10 years sort of how that's, how DNS itself has changed, although the protocol has been largely unchanged, its usage has changed a lot. 10 years ago, it was a pretty big deal when ad networks were sort of using the domain name system to serve up different ads by just simply cycling through different different uh, domain names or different IP addresses from those domain names. And that, that turned out to be a pretty successful venture for them. But then other people got the idea that, hey, we could use DNS to do global site load balancing. We can use DNS to do a lot of things. So what we've seen is an increase sort of in the capacity that has been needed for the domain name system, not just because the number of users grows on the internet or the number of domain names grows on the internet, but because those users and those domains are doing so much more than they did before. So from a sort of a challenge perspective is you, you have a capacity growth uh, issue where it's redoubling about every 16 to 18 months where that's an interesting scalability challenge that you have to stay in front of because if the DNS system doesn't work, um, then the internet doesn't work. It's, it's pretty much that simple. Um, but then coupled with that, so many users now are getting uh, a, a lot of bandwidth from broadband. I mean, the definition of broadband used to be a lot lower than what people are actually using today. In fact, most cell phones can actually transmit speeds higher than what um, the U.S. government, for example, originally classified as broadband. Those devices now become uh, either an, an attack element or a query element uh, for legitimate purposes. But either way, um, the growth in in uh, malicious traffic or attack traffic on the DNS infrastructure um, has outpaced that of the legitimate traffic. Now, that's not unexpected, and I think you'd find that in, in, in many of the industries. But the challenge that it presents is that you have to stay so far ahead of it because you don't have the time to go around and update you know, 100 or more sites uh, at a moment's notice and throw more capacity at the problem. So it has to be something that's sort of forecasted well in advance. And DNS itself, 
up until now really had no security associated with it. It used the UDP protocol, which was a completely stateless protocol, so, you, so addresses could easily be forged. Um, and, and there was no validation that, that it was coming from any particular place, and so DNS was often used as a reflector attack against other victims, where you could send a relatively small query, and the answer coming from the name servers would be relatively large, so you could amplify an attack 8, 10, or even 64 times what it originally was. So DNS is both a victim and sort of an enabler, if you will, of other uh, uh, denial of service type, types attacks. So, uh, a lot of the research that's going on in this space is not just around how to secure the message itself, which DNSSEC uh, does a very good job of, uh, but also how to fortify the protocol itself in the longer term and thinking sort of years down the road, what is that protocol going to look like so that it's less susceptible to the kinds of attacks that it is today? I remember when Dan uh, came out with his disclosure about the weaknesses in the DNS, uh, we were sitting around the office kind of trying to come up with solutions of how, how we could fix it. And uh, one of the solutions was, oh, why don't we just send, uh, just have the DNS server send two replies instead of one. And then somebody came up with the realization that uh, that's physically impossible because the DNS servers are now almost running at capacity. So when I heard about, oh, okay, we're going to start implementing DNS sec, I thought, wow, if we don't have the capacity to run, you know, to do something that simple, how do we have the capacity to actually run DNSSEC? The problem with multi-query, capacity is an issue, but the thing is, theoretically, you could just do multi-query in situations where there might be an attack. The real issue with multi-query is there's no guarantee from request to request that you'll get the same answer back. Like, if you look at Facebook, or you look at Hulu, or you look at a lot of very, very popular sites, you can't just say, well, we'll secure the entire internet, but Hulu, because uh, that doesn't fly. <laughs> so multi-query was dropped not because of capacity, because we were able to scope when the capacity had happened. It was dropped for compatibility reasons. Well, I'm curious what your thoughts are on social engineering threats, cousin domains, uh, IDN spoofing attacks, things like that. Is there an opportunity for DNSSEC to fix those problems or those things that need to be fixed higher in the application stack? So, so this is actually a fascinating question because uh, um, a lot of people have asked, why can't I can do something about like bank dash dash of dash dash America dot com? You know, why 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 is this a thing that happens? And the thing is. DNS's strength is that it is a delegated namespace. That once you have a chunk, you, as long as no one else is using that chunk, you can put whatever you want in there. Making DNS not DNS is not going to work. That is what extended validation is for. That is what certificate authorities are for. And a lot of people think DNSSEC means we aren't going to need the CAs anymore. They're wrong. The certificate authorities are more important now than they've ever been because they are the third parties that have boots in the ground all over the world to differentiate what is a domain and what is a brand. Brands are a closed namespace. You can't have something that's like McDonald's uh, dash dash. Like you can do that with domains all day. You can't do that with brands. We see DNSSEC actually bolstering extended validation.